Great. So thanks everyone for attending uh, today's, today's session. We have a very exciting uh, agenda for today's webinar to talk about uh, two of the pilots we did with uh, Nature's Pride uh, and Nature's Pride Foundation, and then with two of their growers, that's a two in South Africa and Dominus in Peru. Um, and on today's call, we have uh, Kun van Iwaarde from Nature's Pride, um, Clive Garrett from Zeta2, and then Kun will also represent uh, Dominus. They are unfortunately not able to attend uh, due to the different time zones. And then myself, uh, Miriam Knepkens from uh, GAIN and the Workforce Nutrition Alliance. So on the agenda for today is, um, first of all, uh, yeah, we talk about Nature's Pride uh, and GAIN and our partnership, what we've been doing in this program. Uh, and then after that, we dive into the experiences of uh, both Dominus and Zeta2 on how they have been working uh, with the Nutrition at Work Handbook and how they have been doing a pilot uh, to improve the nutrition of their workforce. Um, and I think it's very exciting to have them, uh, to have Clive on the call uh and to hear dominus stories as well and to um yeah hear the wonderful successes they have reached uh, in those pilots and of course after that we also have some uh room for q a and we're very happy that liesel engelbrecht is uh joining us today as well she uh has been working closely together with uh, zeta2 in south africa uh, as a nutritionist to support them in uh, developing this program so uh, if you have any questions to her directly, uh, those can be asked in the Q&A as well. So please feel free to submit any questions uh, during the presentation or during the Q&A in the Q&A box that you can see uh, at the bottom of your screen. Um, yeah, and um, before we start, I just wanna say that we're very excited to have so many people uh, registered for this webinar and, um, I'm sure as we go, some uh, others may join as well. It's great to see such an interest from a wide variety of organizations and also across the globe. So um, welcome and uh, thank you for being here. Over to you, Kun. Good day, everyone. Uh, very nice to see everybody. Uh, so much interest in this uh, webinar. I'm uh, Koen van Eeuwaarde and I work at the Sustainable Business Department of Nature's Pride. Nature's Pride is an importer of exotic fruits and vegetables, and we import over 200 products from more than 50 countries. And we supply the European market um, in 20, uh, 29 countries, mainly uh, Western Europe, so Germany, uh, Scandinavia, Netherlands, Belgium. Uh, these are very important markets for us, and we supply retailers, wholesalers, and food service, more than 350 clients. And you can see some of the products that we, that we sell, including, of course, the avocado from ZZ2 and the mango from Dominus. Nature's Pride also has a foundation, and uh, so it's a nonprofit, the nonprofit branch of the company, and we focus on nutrition and on water. And we build on Nature Sprite's expertise and network. So we work through our uh, dedicated growers, such as ZZ2 and, and Dominus. And we aim to deepen Nature Sprite's sustainability work. And we work in the countries of origin, but also in Europe. This is our sustainability plan uh, of the company. Um, without going into too much detail, we work on uh, social uh, aspects, community development, uh, labor conditions, reduction of waste and environmental criteria. And in the foundation, we work uh, water on the right and uh, nutrition here on the improve, um, in the pillar of improving livelihoods. So in nutrition, we work on three different levels. In the middle, you can see a picture of a, a series of projects we have uh, where we install uh, vegetable gardens at public schools. So we will, the, the aim is to help schools provide nutritious meals to their uh, um, students. And not everywhere, for example, in Peru, this is a picture from Peru, not everywhere students have enough 
uh, access to fruits and vegetables. And so we kind of complement governmental pro uh, programs. And on the right, you see a picture of the Fruit and Vegetable Brigade, which is the food bank in the Netherlands. And we donate a lot of uh, product to uh, the uh, food bank. And from the foundation, we also support with logistical uh, support. And of course, on the left, and this is what we will be talking about today, is the alliance with uh, GAIN for nutrition at work. So why do we want to work on nutrition? Well, first and foremost, it's really a key topic of our times. It, as everybody knows, what we eat affects uh, our health and also the health of our planet. Our diet influences the food systems and food systems have an impact on the health of the planet. We also have seen that there's quite a lot of inequality in nutrition. So not everybody has the same possibility to access or to afford nutritious foods. And there's really a need for action. And finally, we think this is a field where Nature's Pride and the Nature's Pride Foundation can make a difference. If we work through our network of growers and clients and our expertise in the field of fruit and vegetables. Uh, this is our core activity. We can articulate in the value chain and also reach the people in the countries of origin. So we see a lot of challenges around us in the world uh, in terms of uh, planetary boundaries, uh, water scarcity and other uh, obesity and other uh, difficulties. So experts recommend to change diet uh, and eat more fruits and vegetables to shift to a more uh, plant-based uh, diet and also to increase sustainable production. And the General Assembly of the United Nations has also uh, declared 2021 as the year of, International Year of Fruits and Vegetables to really call for action to increase the consumption of fruits and vegetables. So this is the kind of diet that they would recommend. And you can see avocado, but also some of the other products that Nature's Pride trades, like blueberries or uh, pomegranates, um, are some of the products that we want to bring to the consumer in Europe. But we also want to bring health to the uh, people in the beginning of our value chain, the workers uh, at our growers. And this is where we ask, well, what can we do more for the people uh, in our value chain. And this is where the partnership with GAIN uh, comes in because they have this beautiful nutrition at work handbook. And, and when we learned about it, uh, we initiated a partnership to make the handbook publicly available in four different languages and also to pilot it ourselves with two of our strategic growers. And this is what we will talk about today, the experiences of implementing the handbook. So this is where I hand over to you, Miriam, so you can tell a little bit about GAIN. Thank you. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, we uh, uh, started a partnership with Nature's Pride last year. Very excited about that. So um, let me first share a bit about GAIN. Uh, so GAIN is a Swiss-based uh, foundation, stands for G uh, Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. Uh, launched in 2002 uh, to tackle um, yeah, malnutrition uh, issues all over the world, specifically in developing countries and uh, reaching the most vulnerable. And uh, we want to do that not alone, but in partnership with governments, businesses, uh, academia, um, so that we can really transform food systems. And uh, we're based in... Um, uh, if we go to the next slide, in uh, a number of countries across uh, Asia and uh, Africa, and then representative offices in both Europe and uh, the US. And as you can see, we're not uh, currently located in the uh, in Southern America, um, but it's great that with Nature's Pride, we uh, cover a bit of that uh, part of the world as well. So uh, that's mm -hmm. another great reason to partner uh, with Nature's Pride. Um, so uh, in 2019, uh, GAIN partnered with the Consumer Goods Forum to start the Workforce Nutrition Alliance, uh, where we want to support employers um, 
to adopt workforce nutrition programs and uh, roll it out both in their own companies, but also in their supply chains like Nature Sprite is doing. Um, so we advocate for uh, workforce nutrition and then we also offer support. And uh, the reason why we think this is so important is because we see that one in three people worldwide are malnourished. Um, so that is, well, almost every country in the world has issues with uh, nutrition, whether it's undernutrition or overnutrition, um, or even hunger in some cases. And at the same time, 58% uh, of the global population uh, will spend uh, at least a third of their adult lives at work. So. Uh, it's a huge opportunity for employers to, um, to do something for their workforce uh, because we're spending so much time of our lives at the workplace. And then uh, also malnutrition impacts individuals, but also businesses and economies significantly. And uh, if we look a bit further into that, uh, we come to the business case of, uh, of workforce nutrition because there's actually a number of benefits for companies to invest in programs like this. Uh, of course, uh, the companies that we work with are very interested to improve the health and well-being of their employees. They care about the people they work with, uh, but at the same time, they also realize that there is a huge potential to increase productivity and efficiency if people are uh, well-nourished. Uh, it can have a big impact on absenteeism, uh, but it can also improve more the sort of soft um, indicators like a morale and engagement, just building a relationship with your workforce, uh, getting recognition for what you try to do as a company. Um, that is a lot of positive feedback that we get that um, employees are very excited about uh, programs like this. Uh, and related to that, it can also increase employee retention or attract prospective employees. Uh, and for many companies, it's also very important to attract uh, customers, whether it's uh, consumers or buyers who are looking to engage with responsible businesses. Uh, and of course, again, uh, the caring aspect, um, it's also an opportunity to support employees' families and broader communities. Um, and uh, Nature's Pride is in good company, actually, because uh, we are working uh, with a range of companies worldwide, whether it's big or small, that are uh, already working on workforce nutrition and are, yeah, really became an ambassador for, uh, for this type of work. And one of them is Google, and they uh, have a wonderful program on, to provide healthy food at work, and they really see the benefits of it as well. And then Unilever, for example, focused more on um, nutrition-focused health checks with their Lamplighter program. Um, and they have been, uh, ha yeah, have had very positive experiences with that as well. Um, we go to the next slide, thank you. So when we talk about uh, workforce nutrition, we talk about four different topics. And uh, the first one is healthy food at work, uh, where the two pilots, focus mostly on as well. And then there's breastfeeding support, uh, nutrition focused health checks and nutrition education. And both pilots also had uh, components of nutrition education included. Um, so you go to the next slide. Um, with the Work Workforce Nutrition Alliance, we try to, um, we want to support companies in the whole process of uh, building their workforce nutrition program. So the first step is to assess where they stand. Um, so are you at beginner or maybe bronze, silver, gold level? Uh, and where can you improve, of course? And then based on that, to set your enhancement targets, develop your implementation plan, access implementation support, uh, and then monitor and report on what you're doing. And of course, also reap the rewards. And uh, these are some of the tools that we are offering to companies. Uh, the first one is, like I mentioned, the self-assessment scorecard, which is a great way to assess um, how you are doing currently and to get inspiration for what you could be doing as a company. 
Uh, we are working together with technical experts like Alive and Thrive, BDA Work Ready, and ITD uh, on those four different topics. Um, we are offering a technical support program to, to help companies on this journey to improve. Uh, and as I mentioned, we are working with uh, what we call lighthouse leaders, these inspirational examples um, to show what could be, uh, what the options are really. Um, and we are also very excited that the World Benchmarking Alliance, who is um, listing 350 companies uh, on their achievements, they have integrated these workforce nutrition uh, indicators uh, as well to see what companies are doing uh, in that area. Um, so one of the tools that we're offering uh, is the Nutrition at Work Handbook, and this is where we partnered with Nature's Pride. Uh, it's focusing on the Healthy Food at Work pillar. Um, but as I mentioned, the two companies also uh, included some nutrition education components into their pilots because they thought that would really be a value add. And this is really a step-by-step -step guidance for businesses to provide healthier meals and snacks at the workplace. So it's very practical, it's very hands-on. Um, and with Zeta2 and Domino's, we tested um, yeah, how they could use it in their setting. So it starts with the business case, of course, why would you invest as a company? Why would you care? And what could it do for you, both for employee and employer? Uh, and then it goes into the practicalities of building a healthy meal and building a healthy snack. And of course, there's also attention for program management. Um, so the next slide is a very quick overview of um, yeah, what the uh, what the content of the of the handbook is all about. And I think if you if I would explain to someone how do I improve my diet, I would start with these. Uh, these things, add vegetables, switch to fortified products or whole grains, and then offer a variety of protein foods and shift towards a balanced meal. And this is true um, globally, actually, and uh, very relevant in all of the settings where we work. So um, yeah, this, is, this gives you a bit of a sense of the style of the handbook. And of course, um, feel free to download the handbook yourself as well. Um, so I think that uh, brings me to the pilot that we did with, uh, with Nature's Pride. We started last year, October, and we finalized uh, August this year to pilot the Nutrition at Work Handbook with Zeta2 and Dominus that you will hear more about. And then also, like Kun mentioned, to make it available in Portuguese, French, and Spanish. Uh, and at the same time, also advocate for workforce nutrition in the fruits and vegetables sector and um, showcase what Nature's Pride already has been doing. Um, so that's it from my side and um, handing back over to Kun to talk about the Domino's. Um. Yes, so thank you, Miriam. Domino's is uh, one of the growers that has uh, been with Nature's Pride from the very beginning. Uh, you could say that uh, this partnership we grew hand in hand. Dominus today is one of the leading exporters of mango from uh, from Peru. It's uh, located in the north of the country in a province called Piura, founded in 2007 and uh, today uh, part of the Dumper corporate group, which is a big group, which has lots of other uh, products as well. So they have many years uh, um, in the field, uh, they have sustainability very at the core of their operations and they have approximately 1500 workers. So I'm giving the presentation on behalf of Dominus because as earlier explained, it's a bit difficult for them to participate in this call at this hour because of the time difference. So as I said, they have uh, fields in the uh, upper north uh, uh, regions uh, at the coast. It's approximately a thousand hectares and they're in three different regions and they have two processing facilities. Uh, so for the 21-22 uh, season, they will process more than 25 million kilos of mango. This is both fresh and uh, frozen uh, mango. And so, um, you know, they, they wanted to raise awareness. What the, did they want to achieve in this project? Well, raise awareness and also change uh, 
um, eating habits, right? By improving the nutritional content of the meals provided to the workers. Um, so they did a survey and they, uh, as a first step, of course, and they uh, identified possibilities to improve the menus uh, for the workers. And they also worked a lot on co uh, communication. Um, in this phase, we focused on 740 workers. Uh, this is for the communication. It was, I think, two, by heart, 250 workers that uh, participated in the, ca the canteen, so really the meals. So we did uh, three surveys uh, on knowledge, nutrition, and habits. Habits, of course, as you can see, the sample group is, is a, a quite a bit smaller, but it was a much more in-depth uh, uh, interview by telephone. Um, and it, we wanted to measure the knowledge on food and nutrition among the population, the participants. So it's approximately 50% of the people that participated, a bit more. And we wanted to evaluate the food service. So uh, Dominus for its canteens has an external uh, food server service provider. Uh, and we wanted to know at the start of the program of the pilot, what the opinion was on several aspects of the service of the, by the people, the workers. Here you see some, some of the pictures uh, Dominus did with their workers. So they had people from uh, university and hospital come over to give uh, um, talks. They had uh, ch challenges with the uh, weight and uh, uh, some games also uh, developed. Um, so they, they tried to take a ludic uh, approach to it. So if you look at the awareness, uh, indicators, uh, we wanted to reach uh, 480 persons on awareness, and we achieved 410. Um, this has to do also with the season. Uh, as you may know, agriculture is really nature related. So when fruit ripens uh, quicker, or a market change as well, so what we can receive, this influences when the campaign ends, and it ended a little uh, before we expected, so we didn't reach all the workers that uh, normally work in the season. Uh, for knowledge, what we see is that we have achieved the KPI uh, and there's a big increase in awareness. There's another slide about this as well. And habits, you can see also that we came very close to the objective and we see that 22% of the Participants increased their consumption of fruit, uh, consumption of vegetables and legumes. So we have really a hopeful and positive uh, indicators. I think this, the, the, the images speak for themselves. Um, so previously there was uh, quite some fried food and there was also um, sugar, you know, they generally give um, juices, but they add some sugar to the juices. So there was a possibility to reduce the sugar in the beverages. And we also increased uh, protein, uh, high protein um, ingredients like lentils, beans, and chickpeas. Um, and also, you know, the way that the menu looks uh, a, a bit more appealing, uh, a nice presentation because in the end, and we saw this also really in the in the project, how you serve the food to your people, it's a way of caring for them. It's, a, it's an attention for them. So that's, it's very, uh, very important. If you look at the menu improvements, well, um, we saw it's, it's actually, there we go, it's 455 people. So we have two canteens and one is 250 and the other one is 200. Um, so we achieved that a KPI, and especially uh, we see a lot of increase in the acceptability of the food that was offered. And this is actually really interesting because to change diet uh, is always kind of, well, I would tricky is not the right word, but it's always kind of challenging. The people in the canteen, the managers in the canteen and the managers at Dominus were a bit nervous about whether people would accept the changes if you remove fried food or if you reduce certain amounts of uh, hydro uh, of, of pasta and, 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 and uh, other like unhealthy ingredients. Uh, there was a certain nervousness about people maybe protesting, but what we see is that, for example, the flavor appreciation is very, very high. The variety increased. 
uh, but also salad options and sugar quantities. So I think that's very encouraging. Just a few pictures to uh, to illustrate. It's you see these separations between the workers because we implemented in full COVID time. So uh, that was also a bit of a challenge for project management. So, um, and this is a slide I talked earlier uh, about is that uh, the acceptance rate went up from 63 to 97. So people really actually enjoy, so they're not eating Oh, they're not only eating healthier, but they're also enjoying it more. So they like the meals a lot better. And we saw that the awareness went up from 3.6% to 83%. So just awareness, which was measured by a knowledge questionnaire about certain aspects of nutrition and health. They also have a um, special program where um, workers can earn certain credits and they can exchange these credits for nutritious foodstuffs. So we also worked on this program uh, to include um, ingredients that are more health that are healthier for, for the family. So we include, include, included oats, tuna, milk, lentils, and rice. And these, the, these are foodstuffs that people take home and they use for cooking at home. It's an aspect that we didn't really uh, cooking at home or eating habits at home we didn't really monitor it was out of scope for this project but it is we, we did include this uh, this element of nutritious act uh, the dominance activities uh, at least in the scope of improving their the meals they take home um so what we aim to do for the for the next year is to expand. So we're going to continue. Uh, well, let's let me first go to the purpose of uh, Dominus as as uh, written down by them to have healthy workers in mind in Psyche, and which will in turn be more productive and efficient in their labor. There's of course this element of the business case for um, for a grower to invest to hire nutritionists to establish a team to make people available to do follow-up uh, some of the um, improvements may cost a little bit more as well so if you remove fright and you and you add fresh produce that may be also a bit more of an investment um, so it's very important for dominus to also see that it uh, creates more loyalty, excitement on behalf of their staff. But towards next year, we're going to continue with the uh, two um, factories where we have the uh, 480 employees and also the nutritional habits. So it's really about consumption and habits. And we're going to include some of their, their fields. So this was one of the challenges in, in Dominus they have those two canteens but then they have uh, fields spread over three regions uh, and some are there of their ownership but some are also external growers that collaborate with uh, dominoes um, and they also want to focus more on obesity and chronic diseases they have a, a health specialist in-house as well so she's going to be more involved looking at weight and clinical in indicators and also promoting sports activities I think this is the last slide. And now can switch to ZZ2. Uh, Clive will walk us through the experience in South Africa. Clive. Thank you very much, Kun. Um, I think firstly, thanks to yourself. Also, thanks to Miriam. Thanks to the Nature's Pride Foundation, um, to Gain, uh, to Liesel Engel Engelberg, the nutrition that, nutritionist that's assisted us. Mm -hmm. Um, we really, really appreciative of the work that you've put in, the assistance that you've given us, um, the guidance that you've given us, uh, most appreciated. And I think it's made, a, it's made a big impact on the few people that we've managed to reach within ZZ2. Thank you. Just quickly, our inspiration. Um, we want to be the benchmark of success in agriculture by creating sustainable value for all our stakeholders as a living open system. Um, and, and our stakeholders, if I talk about our stakeholders, our stakeholders are, are everyone that's involved with the company. And our employees are probably right at the top 
when we talk about our stakeholders. When we talk about our core business, our core business is high quality primary agricultural produce that we like to supply to clients who expect value and nature's pride falls into that, into that category. Our practices optimize resources are ethical and both environmentally and economically sustainable. When we talk about environmentally and economically sustainable, we follow a philosophy of what we call Nati Boudre. Now, loosely translated into English, that's an Afrikaans term. Least, loosely translated in English, it means nature-friendly farming. So whatever we do, we try and make sure that we're looking after the environment because we know there are generations coming behind us to farm on the same land that we're currently farming on. Right, that's just a footprint of, of South Africa. Um, and basically from the tip of South Africa to the, the top of the country, you're looking at a distance of about uh, 1,800 kilometers. So it's vast distances. And as you see, ZZ2 is spread out over the country from uh, the Southern Namibia where we do dates to the Western Cape where we do apples and pears. In the Eastern Cape, we do apples and pears. And then up in the Limpopo province, which is right at the top in the north of the country on the Limpopo River, bordering Zimbabwe and Botswana, uh, we do most of our tomatoes and avocados there. In the middle of the country, we do a lot of cherries. Uh, we also do cherries in the northwest province, and we also do cherries in the, in the east of the country in, in the Impumalanga province. So this was unfortunately one of our biggest challenges that we faced is that ZZ2 is very widely spread out over the country. And even within the Limpopo province, um, I'm not sure if you can see, but we've got about four or five farms listed there. And even those farms are very, very widely spread. So what we did was we concentrated most of our efforts on this initiative um, at our head office, which is based in Muketsi, which is also in the Limpopo province. Our aligned goals between ourselves, uh, the Nature's Pride Foundation and GAIN, was to create awareness regarding the importance of a healthy diet. Um, what we also wanted to do was make healthy and fresh food available to our employees. And then lastly, to make a healthy eating a habit. And I think once people actually get into the habit of eating healthy, it becomes a, becomes a way of life. And as Kuhn explained uh, at Dominus, um, people actually really take to it, whether it's um, whether it's, it's providing healthy meals. Well, what we, what we did see is that people really enjoyed um, actually eating more healthy. Okay, if we look at the pilot results. We're gonna start with the video, Clive. Let okay. me play it for the audience and then we go back yeah. to you. Okay. Good nutrition is the foundation of good health. Globally, one in three people suffer from at least one type of malnutrition. This significantly impacts their quality of life and poses challenges to employers in terms of lost potential. In this context, the Nature's Pride Foundation, NPF, and the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, GAIN, started a partnership which aims to improve health by promoting better nutrition of workers in the fruit and vegetable sector. We are here at ZZ2 and we are a dedicated supplier to Nature's Pride. We are very excited about our collaboration with Nature's Pride Foundation and GAIN in the workforce nutrition area. At ZZ2, we'd like to create a home for all of our employees. And obviously in your home, you want your people to be as fit and healthy as possible. Therefore, the nutrition program at ZZ2 is incredibly important to us. ZZ2 will benefit in that our employees will be a whole lot more productive if they've eaten well and they're healthy. I think ZZ2 is doing a good job of providing especially balanced uh, nutrition because nutrition can provide energy, especially to our workers, or it can fight uh, the disease in the body, it can improve the immune system. I think this program has benefited us a lot because at first I didn't know that nutrition is so very important. So since the introduction of the eating habits at ZZ2, it builds a lot, especially in my life and in my food program. So I'm very happy about this situation. It teaches me how to put the vegetables in the meals 
and the carbohydrates. So much more things for the health in the body. It changed me now. I was even eat more vegetables in my home. I was just eating more fat food. So now I learned that I have to put vegetables in my meals, carrots, potatoes and beetroot. I think it's important for all companies to have a nutrition program for their employees. What we have found, it certainly makes the employees a lot more productive and happy employees. Please continue, Klaus. All right, thank you, Kun. What, what uh, the project activities involved is we conducted a survey and interviews on focus groups, and uh, we had group discuss discussions to inform the people regarding the project activities. We, we wanted to introduce fruit and vegetables at the ZZ2 shop at our headquarters. What we wanted to also do was introduce more nutritious foods at the canteen, and that's also at the head office in Mukhetsi. And then what we also wanted to do was communicate to employees to create uh, or increase the awareness around healthy diets. If we look at some of the results in the canteen, what we did was we introduced a 10-day cycle menu instead of just an ad hoc menu, um, which helped improve planning and logistics. What we did was we didn't want to change radically. So what we did was we maintained elements of the popular dishes that we were serving, but we adjusted the recipes with the help of the nutritionist to include more vegetables, legumes, fortified products, and reducing fats. Example, a lot of our product was deep fried. Uh, we reduced, and we also reduced the, the sugar content. What we also did was we made apples and eggs available at the point of sale. So where people were purchasing their, their meals, they could also buy apples and eggs. What we saw was we had a 264 increase, percentage increase in our vegetable purchases in the canteen, and we had a 30% reduction in unhealthy food. Just some of the comments that we received, Alicia Austin, who, who manages our ZZ2 canteen, and she's also an HR representative. She found that the kitchen staff were incredibly happy and, and they liked the fact that uh, we had set days where they could discuss the menu, they could plan the menus, uh, the staff liked the structure, um, they were very happy that we were not buying unnecessary items, um, and then the staff also knew exactly on a daily basis how much food to prepare, unlike in the past. Um, in fact, what we were finding is that the kitchen staff or the canteen staff would, would come to Alicia um, and remind her about including extra veggies on the menu. Um, so it, it was a very, very successful venture in that regard, in that the canteen staff really took this to heart and, and actually owned the process later on. What we also did was um, we had a few sessions where we, we, we discussed the benefits of healthy eating with a lot of staff. We had a 14 week nutrition awareness campaign. Um, we reached about 150 employees there. But what we also did was we sent out a lot of WhatsApps and that will come through in the next slide. We sent up a lot of WhatsApps and emails where we reached approximately 900 of our staff explaining to them um, the benefits of eating healthy, how you can change your diet. Uh, and that was inc incredibly successful. These are two examples of, of WhatsApp messages that we sent out where we were trying to show people that at least 50% of your plate should consist of vegetables, 25% protein and, and less starch. Um, what we also did was we just tried to provide people with some information of, of why you should eat healthy. If you eat more tomatoes, they contain antioxidants, high fibers, etc. So this was, it. this was the kind of message, the, and this is just a, a simple example of the messages that we were sending out on, on WhatsApp and most people in South Africa, um, all our, our employees, most of them have uh, these smartphones where you can read these WhatsApp messages. So that was very, very successful. And as I said, we reached at least 900 people uh, in, in this way. 
Some of the feedback that we, we got there, Sunay Ru, who heads up our Learning and Growth Academy, um, she gave us feedback saying that where people were asking her when's the next message will come in. They were very looking forward to it. They, they spoke about the content. They actually thanked her all the time after the broadcasts. Um, we think that we, from the positive feedback we got, there was a greater awareness now about vegetables and drinks. Um, and then also what we found is that some people were asking, um, you know, please include my wife on the WhatsApps. Uh, it'll be nice for her to also see that. So that was very positive feedback that we received from the employees. The shops one was a little bit difficult. We never, we never really succeeded in this one. Um, we had a few logistical challenges on, on getting fresh fruit and vegetables to our shops. We were also concerned there were a number of vendors right near our head office. We didn't want to take business away from them. So that's something that we're still, we're still working on. Okay, the, the project limitations and challenges, I have discussed some of those briefly. Um, unfortunately, as I mentioned, because ZZ2 is so widely spread out over, over the country, um, there was only a select number of our ZZ2 staff at the canteen. Um, so very, very difficult to, to get access to the rest of the staff. Uh, we feel that sometimes language may be a barrier to understanding the communication messages, not all staff are fluent or literate in English. So that's another problem that we can work on in the future. Um, we're also not sure that even if the knowledge did improve, um, did the behavior still change? You know, there may be a lack of financial and physical accessibility to nutritious food. So that's something that we're not quite sure on. And then we were also limited a little bit with our human resource capacity. Unfortunately, this program came uh, in the midst of a, of a pa pandemic. Um, and I think our resources were a little bit stretched dealing with COVID, et cetera. Okay, highlights. Definitely, I think the biggest highlight for us was improved productivity in the canteen. As I mentioned before, with the canteen cooks took ownership of the project. They were really enjoyed it. Um, what we did see was the staff were appreciated, and I think um, Kun also pointed out that at Dominus, um, people were happy about the changes in the menu, um, both at the canteen and the message awareness. The staff were not resistant to change towards the healthier food options. I think they quite enjoyed it. Um, there was support from top management down. Um, there was forced ad adaptation to the menu changes from both the canteen people and, and the staff. Um, we believe there was definitely an increase in healthy food sales and a decrease in unhealthy food sales. Um, we believe that um, the education opportunities are there to be expanded on. Um, and then we also, we had um, insight into the barriers to access nutritious food. And that's something that we can work on to address in the future. Right, what, what we're going to do, um, we're going to continue with improvements in the canteen. I think one of the biggest things that we can do there probably is still cut down on the amount of starch. We've already cut down nicely on the, on the sugar. We want to continue with the awareness campaign. As we mentioned, we had very good feedback on that. It's a very easy way to communicate with the, with the staff members. And then what we want to do is we now want to start Im improving the menu at the, our aftercare and creche. For, um, for our ZZ2 staff. A lot of ZZ2 staff members send their children to the creche and we want to start improving um, the nutrition habits from a young age. And we believe if you start eating correctly from a young age, that will carry you through even to, into your adulthood. Thank you very and much. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, exactly. <laughs> So to wrap up, this is the last slide and then we open up for questions. Um, from an HS Pride perspective, nutrition really is a perfect fit. It's the essence who we are as a fruit co trading company and what we care about. And uh, it enables us to take action together. Together is one of our core values. And we're really very proud of Dominus and ZZ2 being the pioneers to pil pilot this, this 
handbook in this program in COVID times. Uh, so uh, thank you so much to both our growers, to Clive, who's present here. And we're very uh, proud of the partnership with GAIN because they have given us a lot of uh, expertise and the handbook offers us um, scalability. We can bring the handbook to other growers and they can take it. And we now learned also with a nutritionist and some planning, you can really make uh, uh, fairly quickly uh, improvements. So nutrition really is the basis of the quality of life. As I said, uh, diets affect our health and our environment. We spend 30% of our life at work. So it's a high, uh, it has a high potential to make a positive impact. Um, better nutrition benefits the workers, but also their families because they take home some of the awareness and the knowledge they get at the workplace. It benefits the companies, in our case, the growers, but also in a broader aspect, the society and the environment. So we have been focusing in this program on awareness, access and consumption. And uh, we hope as Nature Sprite is one company within our value chain with our clients to uh, make a contribution to address uh, unequal uh, opportunities to access nutritious food. And finally, we've seen that tiny changes in the menu can actually make a very big difference. So I think this is the last slide. Miriam, you have an announcement to make? Yeah, thank you, Kun. Uh, I just wanted to highlight uh, a webinar that we're hosting next week, uh, Learning from Leaders, Examples of Good Nutrition for Employees and Supply Chain Workers, which will be very exciting as well. So uh, yeah, if you have, have the opportunity, please, uh, you're very welcome to attend. It's uh, October 27th, uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Central European time. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, let me leave you with the ladies from ZZ2 who are in the kitchen in the canteen. And uh, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. And let's, uh, I will unshare my screen so we can see each other as well and uh, see if there are questions from the audience. Thank you. Or maybe I can also give the floor to Liesl who is with us. To, from a nutritionistic perspective, maybe you want to share a reflection as well, Liesl. Uh, you have been accompanying ZZ2. What was the experience like for you? Uh, maybe you want to share a bit about that. Thanks, Kun. Thanks, everybody. Um, yes, I think from, from my experience, I think what, what stood out was how important it is to work with, with each company and to get that um, engagement of that company's specific needs, because I think every company will be different and it won't be exactly according um, to what a handbook says and then sort of finding out what will work for that company and I think with, with ZT2 there was a great team that was very committed uh, to drive this process and I think that really really makes a difference and and, and the other thing I think is to, is to remember that um, as you said small changes can really make um, a big difference. So we did small things like changing processed meats to, to, um, to more whole meat cuts. And we added vegetables in mixed meals and so not necessarily at the start, just uh, bringing in only vegetable um, extra meals, but actually bringing those into usual meals that they are used to already and increasing sort of vegetables um, dramatically with that. Um, so, um, and, and also with the, with the, um, um, knowledge, having sort of uh, transferring that um, to your um, um, to your behavior. Um, I agree that is that is very difficult um, to do, but I think better is still good. So I think um, you know this was uh, this was a small change and it, and it, and it was um, um, one start, but I do think this is uh, something that can build momentum. And at least there was now uh, there is something now that um, that creates more. Um, um, awareness of something that there wasn't awareness of at all before. Um, yeah, so I think those are, so those are some of my, my major sort of just extra add-ins that, uh, that I wanted to share. Wonderful, thank you so much, Liesl. Um, don't know if there are any questions from the audience by chat. Sure. Any 
or any comments from Gain? From let us see. We have a few more minutes left for the. Are there any doubts? No questions? Well, we have made a very clear presentation then, I suppose. Um, well, if you have any questions, you can always reach out either to Gain or to ourselves. And I think we will also upload the recording on the Workforce Nutrition Alliance website, I believe. Is that that's correct, right, uh, Miriam? Yes, indeed. And I also see that uh, Sana Bakker shared that she is typing a question. So uh, let's. Oh, okay. So maybe I just need a little to be bit more patient, patient. Uh, <laughs> so, for that. Um, and Mary Corbett is sharing in the chat that it's very interesting that even a fruit and vegetables value chain, uh, it doesn't automatically translate to. Uh, yeah, to people consuming fruits and vegetables. And that yeah. is very correct and unfortunate. But uh, at the same time, it's a great opportunity because with Z2, we've also seen how some of the produce that isn't uh, suitable for export, for example, can be uh, actually used for employees to consume. So it's, um, it's a very good match, but yeah. indeed, uh, it's not a guarantee. Um, Absolutely. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, uh, Mary. Um, it's all, you know, this is when I brought this project also to management and the topic of nutrition. It's a, it's almost a paradox, right? Because our company is about bringing fruits and vegetables to the European consumer. And then we learned that the people who spend a, a big part of their day harvesting or packaging fruit and vegetables, they themselves don't necessarily eat enough fruits and vegetables. Um, so this is why this project as well is, is, and this partnership is such a good match. Absolutely. Yeah, and I see that Sonne Bakker's comment is also uh, on that exactly. So has one of your partners experimented with take home fruits, uh, perhaps that those are not pretty enough uh, for still sale, but still in good quality. Yeah, Clive can talk about uh, the tomatoes that you uh, donate as well. Uh, ZZ2 is a, the biggest producer of tomatoes. So. Uh, yes, uh, what, what we did, especially during the pandemic, we noticed that especially one of our varieties of tomatoes, which is what we call a speciality tomato, the demand therefore uh, dropped dramatically because it's mainly restaurants that actually used to buy that tomato. Mm -hmm. And because with the closure of restaurants, what we then did, um, we then distributed those tomatoes that we would have normally have sold, we distributed to the communities around us on a very big scale. And um, if I remember correctly, it was, it was a re in the region of about 100 tons of tomatoes that we distributed to the communities around us just to help the people during the time of the pandemic. Wonderful. Great. And I see that uh, Grietje Hoefsloot has a question. Um, Zetta too mentioned that uh, they would like to take this to the crashes, crashes as well. Uh, is there a manual for this and could we use the Nutrition at Work handbook uh, to implement in schools as well? Uh, as GAIN or the Workforce Nutrition Alliance, we do not have specific guidance uh, for uh, schools, for example, but I do think there is a lot of over overlap. Um, so yes, I, can def I definitely think you can use the guidance, uh, for example, how to build a healthier meal, how to build uh, a healthy snack that is relevant uh, in all settings uh, with the note that of course the portion sizes for example um, are for adults and uh, with children you may want to think of uh, different portion sizes but also maybe different um, nutrition uh, yeah it challenges that you may uh, find in children um, and then Oh, sorry, please go ahead. Sorry, Miriam, just carry on. I was going to read the next question. So if you no. would like to comment on the question. No, I, I just wanted to mention in, in terms of one of the questions there, what ZZ2 does on a weekly basis and it applies to every single staff member, we do give them uh, tomatoes every week. So on a weekly basis, all of us take home uh, a certain amount of tomatoes that we can use at home. I'm 
And Miriam, just also maybe to add to your point of the Nutrition at Work handbook for um, for the pressures, is that yes, looking looking at that handbook, there is a big emphasis on your green and your orange vegetables that are also um, recommended for for children, and your and your protein sources that has a lot of iron in it, also for your children. So in terms of um, of pediatric guidelines, I think it's it's very much in line with it. It will only be mostly your um, your portion sizes that would need to be looked at, and that can be adapted by uh, by nutritionists in your in your area, or even by looking at at um, at your national guidelines in the in the area that you that you live in, because they they will also have guidelines for um, for portion recommendations for um, for your children. Great, thank you for that add-on, uh, Liesl. Um, so maybe, uh, sorry, I'm just seeing if any other questions came in, uh, not that I see, um, but maybe from Gainside, just to mention uh, how wonderful and useful it has been uh, to work with Zeta2 and Dominus. Uh, not only for this pilot, but also in developing uh, the further technical support that we can offer to companies. And in light of that, we actually developed um, as a sort of building on the Nutrition at Work Handbook, we developed uh, guidebooks for each of those uh, topics that I mentioned earlier, um, healthy food at work, nutrition education, breastfeeding support, and nutrition focused health checks. And in a few weeks time, we are actually also uh, starting a the Get Started program uh, with 12 companies who are starting this journey as well. And we are uh, yeah, going through the process with them of um, building their workforce nutrition program. So it's, uh, and working with Zeta2 and Dominus has been uh, wonderful in developing all of those resources uh, to also make this scalable and more accessible to companies. Um, so please, if you at any point as a company or companies that you're working with would be interested in accessing those uh, technical support programs or um, assessing where you stand with the scorecard, uh, always feel free to visit the website uh, with all of the information or reach out to the Workforce Nutrition Alliance team uh, to learn more about that. Miriam, I think we have a last question from Mary again um, before we wrap up. It was a question about how to reach the fields, the workers in the fields. And this is something, of course, this is, this is the key question uh, because with the canteen, you have a centralized point, you have a kitchen at your disposal, uh, which was a good entry point for us, but we want to increase reach. So for the case of Dominus, we are including three fields. Uh, they are... Um, owned by Dominus. Um, and so this at least gives us a little bit more control instead of outgrowers. And we're looking at uh, possibilities to do a catering service that comes to the fields. And we're also uh, looking at possibilities because sometimes people bring their own meals. So this is a whole different dynamic and much more uh, difficult. Um, how we can help people prepare nice lunches themselves to bring to, uh, to work. Uh, so this will be exploring in the in the coming year. Yeah. So I have a full. I have not yet a perfect answer to the question because this is the million dollar question, at least uh, to me. How to reach the the fields as well? If I can maybe just fill in there, you you hundred percent right. That is our biggest challenge. But I think with the awareness campaign that we did run at ZZ2. What we've at least done, uh, those people that are bringing their own food to work, um, that are working in the fields, um, at least they now are more aware of healthy eating. So I think we've already taken a step in the next direction, but we need to work more on that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, All right. Martha. To respect everybody's time, is there... Shall we wrap up? What do you think, Miriam? Anything you want to say to close yes, let's the meeting? That. Maybe uh, I like the comment from Christina very much, uh, how she enjoyed hearing how much the canteen staff also appreciated the program. Hmm. And I think in general, that is a wonderful note to end with, uh, that we're doing this for the people we work with. Uh, and it's very exciting to uh, make a positive difference in their lives. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for everyone for attending today. Thank you for all the uh, speakers and contributors and uh, wishing you a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.